Good evening, everybody. This is Calvin Butler with the RBBS Logistics Learning Centers and the National Dispatchers Network. And I'm here with one of our network members, um, Mr. Who we got here today? We got Mr. Um, is this Tremaine? Yes. Uh, Slaughter? Yes. Mr. Tremaine Slaughter. And Mr. Slaughter is here today for a private consultation. As you all know, we have private consultation with one of our personal services um, um, features. To our platform and today you are here because you wanted to put together a daily work plan to go over the call script and questions about load management and scaling my dispatch business yes yes right, right. right. correct all right so let me go to start sharing my screen because the daily work plan that basically goes into your let's go over here and share my screen Okay. Let me share my screen and we'll go to mydispatcher.org, which is our back office site. Okay. And let's go to let's go to our dispatcher tools and resources. All right. Your daily work plan for a dispatcher is pretty, you know, kind of cut and dry, really. You just basically what you're gonna do as the dispatcher. One of the first things you want to do, and we have what's we have in here what's called a workflow. Um, if you go through your back office site. And you go to where it says your forms and documents. Yeah, that, that where the lady at right there. Yeah, I think it's in the workflow. Yeah, you can go back. It's yeah. the lady that was right, right, in, uh, right there with the coffee yeah. mug. Yeah, this is this is what we call your workflow of dispatch. Okay, and it, it comes up in a PDF. Now, this is when we first started, but most of it still applies. The only stuff that, that doesn't apply is when you you don't contact us for anything. So now you're you know you're running your own business. This is this workflow was done back when we were um, partnering with our dispatch um, students, and you know we did your processing and you did the actual contacting the carriers and booking the freight and all that type of stuff, and mm -hmm. we just did processing and we kind of split that that dispatch fee you know five and five percent. Okay. Um, but now, since you all keep 100% of your dispatch fee and you, you know, we show you how to run your own business, how to do your own processes. So your workflow changes a little bit, but not much. Right there where it says, once carrier emails you the signed dispatch agreement. Because remember, let me go back. Because remember, your daily workflow really consists of, and you're going to be doing this every day until you get to a point to where you feel like you don't want to grow your business anymore. But one of the things that you're going to be doing every day is calling up what? Carriers. Okay, because you're trying to build your business, right? Yeah, right. So here's what I suggest. I suggest you call carriers in the afternoons between 3 p.m. and 9 p.m. That's when you're looking for the carrier, uh, the places where we show you how to locate the carriers, and uh -huh. you call those carriers up, okay? And you're basically you're hitting them with the pitch. You're trying to get them to do what? to sign up to your Time. dispatcher. Correct. Okay? That's the times when you're going to be calling your carriers between 3 and 9 p.m. Why? Because most carriers shut down around by that time. They've been driving all day. 70 to 75% of all truck drivers drive during daylight um, hours. We were about 25 to 30% drive at night. So the majority of your carriers are going to drive during the daytime, which means they usually getting up about 5 in the morning and they're on the road by 6, 6.30, and they got a 10-hour driving shift. With an 11 hour driving shift, they're not going to drive the whole 11 hours. No carrier does. They're going to drive about nine of those 11 hours, eight, most of them, but no more than about nine of those 11 hours. So around about three o'clock, they're going to be shutting down at some, you know, some um, some truck stop trying to get yeah. them a good park before before five or six o'clock because all the parking spaces are, are taken by then. So from that 3 p.m. to about 9 p.m. is your best time to call your truck drivers, call the owner operators, call your prospective clientele. So that's the time when you are doing your calling from three in the afternoon until 9 p.m. at night. Cause they're not doing anything. They done went inside, got them a shower, got them something to eat. They sitting in front of a TV set, probably watching something they don't want to watch cause somebody has got the remote control first or they sitting in the lounge area on their computer, probably looking for freight already. Okay, so that's a good time to call. Why didn't on their computer looking for freight or they're back in their truck in their bunk on their computer or watching something on 
on their satellite TV. That's the best time to give them a call. Because okay. they're not they're not busy driving. Their mind is at ease. They're probably already thinking about where they're going to get the next load from. So that's a great time for you to call. Okay. okay. So during that time, you're going to be calling them, you know, trying to get them to sign up with you. Now, let's say you've already got yourself two or three carriers already signed up. Okay. Okay. Here's your workflow. Every morning, you're going to get up. The idea time you get up is about 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. Okay. okay. That's the reason why. Because they give you time to do what? Go and look at the low boards. Low board. Okay. Uh, let me... Well, actually, I, I work an overnight job, so I'm I'm already up. Uh, exactly. All right. So, so 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 great. So this is the best time to go and check out the low boards. Now, as you know, one of our favorite low boards is Direct Freight. Okay. So this is the time to go and get onto the low boards. Yeah, I like that and, low board too. Yeah, I mean it's a really underrated. Board. Yeah, it's I mean it's really underrated a lot of people um sleeping on this low board right here a lot of people sleeping on this low board but this is but this is a very good low board uh so come to the low board you know go go over your low map okay you pull up your low map and you and basically what you're doing is you're kind of canvassing to see where all the loads are okay you okay. can't see where let's see where the loads are let's see where the loads are let's see where the loads are now if you notice uh today is what tuesday and it's yeah. about two 40 p.m. So you still got a lot of loads in the south, southeast. Okay. Southeast is always going to have a lot of loads. Mm -hmm. I don't know what time of year it is. You got Texas, you got Florida, you got Georgia, you got Alabama, you know, all these, all this stuff over here got 500 loads plus in each state. Now you'll notice up top, up north, you got very scarce loads. Yeah. Yeah. I see that. And then when you go out west, you don't have that many loads except for California. Yeah. Which is still considered Southwest. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So in the middle of the country, you don't have a whole lot of loads and you don't have a whole lot of loads up north. And but man, when you come over here to Southeast or even Northeast, PA, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, at this time of the day in December, you yeah. got quite a bit of money. Even down here in Georgia, Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, Texas. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You got quite a bit of freight. So what you want to do is from about 5 a.m. in the morning, you come on and start checking your low boards, kind of seeing where loads are at, kind of hidden uh, in the areas. Then you want to start calling your carriers that you have on the contract. Okay. You pull up your carriers, you're going to call them up and say, hey, John, where you at today? Well, man, right now I'm in um, Tennessee. Okay, so you're going to go to Tennessee. You're going to Click on Tennessee to see what's in Tennessee, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Now, what I normally do is when I call, I call up all my carriers, right? The ones I need right. to call, maybe about ten or twelve of them, you know, and I find out where they are. That's first. That, that's how many you dispatch at one time. Well, on average, they my company dispatch for three hundred seventeen carriers every month. Well, I mean, I mean, I I, I know your company, but uh, I mean, just just personally, like, oh, uh, like me, you can handle. <laughs> Me personally, yeah, I can handle about 12, 15. God, now, I don't recommend I don't recommend you all try that. So, <laughs> I recommend I recommend five at the most for you all. Okay. okay? Then, then you hire yourself a dispatch agent, then you grow from there. Okay. Okay. So but we'll, but we'll go with that in scaling your business. All right. All right? So you gotta call up your carrier. Let's say you got three, four carriers. You call all of them up. You find out on where they are. You know, you write down on where they are. Okay. And, and you write your phone number. So you look at this carrier. He said he's in Tennessee. So you go ahead. You're gonna look at all the Tennessee loads. And and uh, you can also look to see by you know if he says you no know, you no know, no you know, because in your profile form you know that he is either a flatbed, drive-in, or a reef. Reef. Yeah. Right. So you can come on here. You can go in here and look for all the loads. Right in Tennessee, and uh, you, you find out exactly where he is in Tennessee. Let's say he was in, um, he might have said, you know, I'm in, I'm in Chattanooga. Okay, yeah. so you're gonna come in here and you're gonna look to see where he's at, Chattanooga. Uh, let's see, look for Chattanooga, Tennessee.
A little bit of Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'm seeing Chattanooga, everything. But it's not Chattanooga, Tennessee. Chattanooga, Chattanooga, Georgia. Chattanooga Hills, Chattanooga, Florida. There it is, Chattanooga, yeah, Tennessee. Yeah. All right, it's Chattanooga, Tennessee. <laughs> and, um, all right, all right. He's in Chattanooga, t uh, I'm Tennessee. Mm -hmm. and, and, if, and what I like to do is start off with a radius of 25 miles just to see what's right close to him. Okay? Mm -hmm. and, then I say, uh, and then I say, you know, destination, you know, up to 100 miles out, you know, or whatever. I don't really. I, I'll, 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 I'll leave that blank. The the destination. Now you know, if he's a dry van, you're gonna put dry van. If he's a flat bed, you're gonna put flat bed. If he's a reefer, you're gonna put reefer. Now if he's a dry van, I'm gonna do like that. You know, Bennett van, and you know, um, I don't really do Bennett van. I'm in a motor with that. But let's say he, but let's say he he's a dry van, and I'm gonna go ahead and search for a load. See what we got in Chattanooga. That's the five bands right now. Then I come over here, then I hit where it says estimated rate per mile, because I want to see what what's paying what, right? And then right. you pull up, you got, you got some loads that's real close by. You got 28 miles. I'm close by dead here, 17 miles. Um, you got a bunch of them that's zero miles. You know, that's Chattanooga, Chattanooga, that's right there. You know, yeah. but these down here don't have prices on them. So you got to look up the lane rates and stuff like that, okay? Okay, but basically, what you got here to show in this pan, you got a little short twenty-eight mile run. It's twenty-eight mile dead here, and it's, and the trip miles. It's only twenty-eight miles. You going to um to Lafayette? Um, you you going to pick it up in Lafayette, Georgia, mm -hmm. which is twenty-eight miles from there, and you're gonna run it back to Chattanooga. <laughs> so you're yeah. going twenty-eight miles now, and just coming back to Chattanooga. It, it's three hundred dollars, ten dollars and seventy-one cent um, per mile. That picks up on the six. That's today, okay. Then you got uh, and this one like right here, right? Because if you're running the bike to Chattanooga, right, you can go back and you can grab this load right here, which is gonna get you some more money because you got time enough to run that and come back and pick this one up, which is six hundred and fifty-one miles, right? Yeah, so that right. pays that pays twelve hundred. And thirty dollars. Now it's not a high paying load. It's a dollar ninety eight cent, but you just made ten dollars seventy one cent here. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying so it's still so, a load that you can probably grab and take and run and make some money for a drive in. Yeah, yeah. You buy you buy that fifteen by fifteen hundred for the day without exactly. even negotiating. Exactly. Without even negotiating. So you know, I try to go ahead and I mean, now here's what I always do. I always try to find me a you know a load when I'm doing my data thing. Find a load in. And then find them somewhere else to go. Okay. Right. Okay. And then what I do is I know that that one can be done real quickly. I mean, I know I got time to come back and run, you know, uh, the twenty-eight miles, right? Uh, right. Right. Because remember, it's gonna pick up in Lafayette, Georgia Lafayette. again. Yeah. I'm just, I went to Lafayette, ran back to Chattanooga, go back to Lafayette, <laughs> pick yep. up, and I'm going to Clarksville or something. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying so uh I would probably go ahead and grab those two or 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 even grab this one right here that, that's 651 miles going to um Winston Michigan I don't know if I want to go to Michigan I have to check to see what's going on up there that's why you want to check that load map <clears throat> but here's what I do I'll go ahead and click this load uh -huh. right before I dispense it out and I'll go ahead and do a reverse search so now you see what's leaving out of Wexham, Michigan. You ain't got nothing there. No, nothing. Right? Nothing there for, for driving. I don't see nothing for driving. I don't see nothing for Bennett van. You know, I don't see nothing there. Right? I'm right. going to search it here. Oh, there we go. Now we got something. All right. So now we got something. All right? Mm -hmm. And it's heading back towards Georgia. If you want to head back towards Georgia. Right? Okay. You got this one right here, which is 32 miles. And this one just came up while we were checking. It's two minutes old. Yeah. <laughs> literally, literally, it just popped up. <clears throat> I got me going by to Warren. Um, 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 picking up in Warren, Michigan, which is 32 miles away. We 
keep dropping off and going back to Shelbyville, Tennessee, taking me back to Tennessee, taking him back to where he started from. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You're sending them out, getting them back. Now, you don't know what that's paying, so you got to negotiate that. Chances are that lane is probably paying somewhere around 215, 230 per mile, you know, coming from up there. Um, it's 17,000 pounds. It's not heavy. You know, you can, you can probably get out of there pretty cool, you know, no problem. Um, here's another one that's going to Leesburg, uh, Tennessee. It's, it's picking up 22 miles. That's that's deadhead and now. It's picking up 22 miles and it's going to Leesburg. And that was paying $1,322, $2.27. And it's taking you back to Tennessee. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I like to do. Now, that's your morning routine. Okay. You kind of, that's why they get about five o'clock. Why? Because most carriers don't want to be on the road by six a.m. Okay. Now, now, question: When, when, when you um, even though you're looking for loads like that, are you also kind of scanning for the to create your own dedicated? Yes, you are. Yes, okay. you are. You, are. you are looking for that. You are looking for some dedicated runs. But as of right now, on this one, I don't see too many. It's not very much dedicated here. You got okay. this one and this one, and they're both leaving on the, it looks like the same day, though. Same day. 12, okay. 7, 12, 7. That's, that's not really dedicated. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So you don't really see, but you're always scanning for those dedicated runs. You're always scanning for the dedicated runs, okay. right? Okay. And I usually tell my carriers when I sign up with them, look, my first, the first three months is when I'm going to try to get you set up on dedicated runs. But until then, I'm going to try to find you some good paying freight. I'm always going to look for your freight going in and coming out. I'm never going to try to see you somewhere and don't have your way out already. Right. Okay? Right. So that's a good practice. Okay. So the first part of your daily routine is calling your care, calling your prospective clients at night, pitching them with the pitch, how much money you need to move your truck and that type of stuff, getting signed up to the dispatch agreement. During the day, early, that, early in the morning, between like 5 a.m., between the hours of 4.30 and 5.35 and 6 a.m., you are looking for loads for your carriers. You're going to call them up, find out where they're at. You can tell them, I'm going to give you a call back in about 15 minutes, and I'm going to have some have some freight options for you. Call them back and tell them what you got. Get them, you know, kind of lock down on that. Then you call the brokers. I know this is most brokers are not going to be up at 6 a.m., but you can always leave them a voicemail, right? right. You can always put the stuff like this right here. And I think that's a way for you to leave them. Um, a message in some cases, um, add a private note right here. Okay, you know, uh, add notes, whatever. Here, close view, view your notes. You know, you can always call up the broker, right? Call up the broker, leave them a voicemail with the load number, all that type of stuff. Leave them, see, load number right here, leave them the load number, yeah, leave them your number, let them know, and leave them your carrier's DOT number so they can go ahead and check it before they call you back, right. Right. So that way, when they get up in the morning, they got loads waiting on them. I'm ready to be booked. Every broker loves that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, know I, I know I did when I was a broker, man. I, man, I used to love dispatchers that, that would call me and leave me a message. And I get up and I check my message. And I got loads that I've got that's already let me know that people want them already. Yeah. That, that's yeah. like, man, that's like broker said, man. You know? So every broker loves that, right? And call oh, them up. Yeah. Broke them call you right back. Say, hey man, you still need that load? Yeah, I, yeah, my guy waiting on it. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, the business is okay. Well, uh, you know, is that the best you can do? Well, I mean, I, I mean, we're doing pretty good on that, but I could probably spare another, you know, 15 cents per mile or whatever. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and get that old locked down. Broken sent over that Raycon. Let them ride. Yep. Right? Right. Now, now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna call both these brokers. Now you're gonna let them. Know, you're gonna let this broker know that he's picking up a load real quick and gonna run it, which that's the short run load, low, which was what twenty eight miles. Yeah. Like yeah, it was like twenty some miles. So let him know that he's gonna be there to pick up this load right here. You know, shortly after that. Okay. So you kind of do, I mean, you gotta do your calculation on speed versus the miles and what the truck can do and all that type of stuff. Let him know that hey, you know. He'll be there around about 10 a.m. to pick that load up. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah that's all right. Okay, cool. You, you go ahead and just kind of play it out like that. And okay. that's your daily, that's your morning routine. Now, also remember, as you're running those loads, 
you're getting those rate cards, you're sending those rate cards over, you're getting those checks, and this, this, and that. You, um, you know, and you guys are, 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 are running. Make sure you get the instructions on, on the rate card because they're going to be calling you at some point in time. Like the instructions may tell them when they get to the pickup spot, pot, call. Okay. So, so when they get to the drop off call or when they get two hours out or having a call. So you're going to have the phone line open. So when they do call, you can check it and say, yeah, they two hours out. You're going to relate it over to the broker. Hey, they're about two hours out, whatever this is that, you know. Keep the broker you know, informed. What's going on when load drops? They're going to send you the what the um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to take that along with you know your other information. You're going to pack that up. You're going to send it over to the broker. The broker's going to forward it up to the factory company. Just yeah. waiting to get paid. Okay. Gotcha. And that's the question. And then about three o'clock, you're starting. You're doing what again? Call it. Calling, calling carriers to uh, call the to sign on. Yes. Okay. So, so that's basically your workflow combined with following that and following this right here. That's basically your workflow. You know, contact the, uh, you know so on the broker associated with the load mm -hmm. uh, for 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 uh, for your carrier broker. We want to send you the rate confirmation. That's things that we just talked about. Uh, you know, get it signed once uh, this load. Um, um, the rate confirmation sheet is signed. Send back to broker. We just talked about that. Once carrier drops, you know, have the carrier send you a copy of either uh, through text or email, the BOL, we just talked about that, and the invoice that they plan to on uh, sending on uh, the broker, we just talked about that, you know, and, and the, when you get paid, and once that gets paid, then you turn around and you bill your carrier. Okay. Okay. I mean, it, I mean, it's simple stuff, really. It's, it's not complicated stuff, you know, that's basically your daily plan. Now, during the mid part of your day, <laughs> you gotta have a lot. Of, you gotta have some free time. <laughs> I mean, I mean like, yeah, yeah. You can take your nap or whatever you're gonna do. You know, you gotta work that night. So, yeah, have your phone on charge right beside you. Take your nap. It's, you know, if you carry a call, you can hear it and wake up and, and grab a phone call or whatever it can be. This is not really that hard of a business. Oh, it's yeah. not really that hard of a business. Your business times are gonna be between that. 5 a.m. and 9 a.m. Okay. That's your, busiest, that's your busiest time. Then your next kind of busiest time is not really busy, it's just you making phone calls that evening from 3 to 9 p.m. to carriers, you know, prospective clients. Right? Mm -hmm. Then you get back up at 5 a.m. in the morning, look on the low board, you know, cabins in the low board, you know, offer your carriers, find us with should pay freight, getting them locked down. The process and that, and okay. it's the same thing every day, man. Basically, like there's gonna be different stuff, different situations that come up, but basically it's the same basic routine every day. Every day, okay, okay. So that's how we. Uh, that's your um, your um, your workflow. Now the next one you want to do, you want to go over the over the script. All right. The script is very simple. Okay. Um, yeah, and, and, and it, I know it's very simple, man. I, you know, I, I come from selling cars, so you know, being on the phone and, 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 and you know, uh, uh, getting appointments is, you know, um, is is it's all you know correlate to what I you know used to do. Yeah. But it, it it seems like um, I don't know, man. It's not a fear. It's just a anxiety, <laughs> I guess. You know. <laughs> I, 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 here's the thing about the script, okay? Believe it or not, I'm not a real big fan of a written out script because each person you call is going to be a little bit different. Yeah, you got to tailor it to, to your own but, way. But 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 here's here's what I'm a fan of. Every great script, every successful script contains the same elements, okay? okay. The first um, element of the script is to ask a, a question that leads the person you're talking to to give you the answer to closing them. Ah, okay, I got that's you. the first. That's the that's the one thing that every great script has in common. Ask a question that leads the person you are talking to to give you the answer to closing them. Now, the second part of that thing is you got to listen for it. Right. You got to explain yourself to listen 
out for the S, right? Right. The, the next part of a great script, okay, always have the same, the exact same transition, transition phrase. phrase. When you go for the close, and they give you a rebut, and they give you a rebuttal, or they give you a a what, what's one of them? Not a rebuttal, but a uh, give you the objection. Objection, yeah. You're gonna say the same thing every time, right? I understand. understand. But, <laughs> so so use the name, Jason. I understand. Sell it. I understand. Daryl, believe me, I understand. But let me ask you a question. Use that same one. Don't try to think of something new to say. <laughs> Just use, I don't care. If they give you 20 objections, use the same transition. Okay. Sell it again. I understand. But let me ask you a question. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah right. Because You're right. What, yeah, that, yeah. what that does is because remember, the original question is basically a trap. You gotta think of a script as a trap. Yeah. So that's what it is. you're yeah. trying to catch something. How much money right? do you need to move your truck? That's the trap. You ask them a question that they have that they're gonna have to give you an answer to. You know? Right. Yeah. You know, you call him, hey, John, how you doing? I'm going, like, hey, look, I go to see that you're in, what you call it? My name is, uh, you know, uh, Calvin Butler, and I'm with RBBS Transport. I'm in LSC. Look, John, I don't want to take up a whole lot of time because I know you're very, very busy. But let me ask you a question. How much money do you need to move your truck? Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> you know, a little chit chat up front. You right here. I don't want to take up much of your time because I know you're very busy, man. But let me ask you a question. How much money do you need to move your truck? Now, you, now they may come with all kind of, man, yeah. another dog. Man, are you a dispatch? Yes, sir. But like I said, how much money do you need to move your truck? Man, I don't, man, I'm tired of y'all dispatchers calling me, man. I don't need no, no dog on dispatch, man. I mean, man, no, no, y'all call me all the time, man. I'm telling you, like I tell everybody, I don't, I don't, I don't need no dispatcher, man. You know, John, I understand. But, but here again, I, I, let me ask you a question. All right, go ahead, man. How much money do you need to move your truck? I ain't saying nothing different. I just said two minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same thing. Yeah. It, 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 now you're going to say, well, shit. Well, I tell you, well, now you think to yourself, let me get rid of this Yahoo on the phone talking about how much money I need to move my truck. Man, I need $12 a mile to move my truck. I don't move my truck with nothing less than $12 a mile. Great. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> because at the dispatcher, I only look for freight to spend the kind of money you want to get paid, going to the places you want to go, putting the kind of freight you want to pull. What can I send my dispatcher beam to? Ah. Now, all I did was, was do what? He's in the trap by answering the question. Yeah. Out of door to unclose, and the trap getting smaller and smaller. Yeah. And so, ain't too much, ain't too many rebuttals he can come up with. <laughs> So now he comes up with, well, man, <laughs> I hear what you're saying, but I had a dispatcher one time. That South Tucker didn't find me nothing but some high pen, but some low dog on cheap freight and lows that were had, man, these heavy, heavy dog on weight. I don't pull it done past 25,000 pounds or, or 30,000 pounds. He's going to send me freight to 60, 70, 80, 90,000. I didn't want to mess with that stuff. I always trying to send me up there, up there to Ohio or, or Portland, Oregon, in the mountains. I don't mess with the mountains, man, especially in the wintertime. John, again, I understand. But let me ask you a question. Now, remember, you asked him a question. He gave you the answers to closing him, $12 per mile. Then he gave you an objection. You asked him another question, right? Right. Right? Yeah. Then he gave you another answer on how to close him. But I had one before. He was sending me a high mileage. No, how mileage runs, he was sending me with heavy weight and low pin. Yeah. Exactly. So he just told you how to close them again. Right. John, look, I understand. Let me ask you a question. If that guy you had last time had to sit you on load that kept you in the South, right? Below that makes him this line. Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Louisiana, Texas, those type of places, flatland. And if he had kept you with loads that were less than 30,000 pounds and was finding you freight, like just paying that $12 a mile like you wanted. You still have that freight. I mean, you still have that dispatcher, right? Well, yeah. Great, because like I said, I only look for freight. Go back to the same thing. There's paying the kind of money. <laughs> yeah. Go to the places you want to go, pulling the kind of freight that you want to pull. What can I send my dispatcher be to? 
That cage gets smaller and smaller. That wow, truck gets yeah. smaller. And now, he, now he's really feeling it. Man, you know what? My wife fired me free. I don't have to pay her nothing. So why I got to pay you? Well, I fired my own free. What do I got to pay you for? Trying to understand. But let me ask you a question. Same transition. Yeah. Right? You ask him, now he done told you how to close him last time. He give you another objection. Now you got to ask him a, a question that's going to keep t- him telling you how to close him. I understand. Your wife finds you afraid. You book afraid on your own. You don't need me. But let me ask you a question. If your wife is looking for loads one day, and she's finding your loads as paying 11, 11, 50, 12, 12, 1 per mile, and she's good at what she does, and you come on and you're really good at what you do. I mean, you recall, you've been doing this a minute, and you know what you're doing. You find a load that's paying 12, 15, 13 dollars a mile. And I call you up the same thing. I got loads that's paying 13, 9, and 14, and 15, and 16 dollars a mile. Which load are you going to run that day? Yours. That's exactly what you're going to say. I'm going to run the highest paying free. Exactly. Because, <laughs> okay. like I said, I'm only going to find you the free. It's paying the kind of money you want to get paid, going to the places you want to go, putting the kind of freight you want to go. Now you break it from the script a little bit because you let them know that you're getting real with it. Look, John, yeah. I'm not trying to place you or your wife. I know she can find you free, and I know you can find you free. I'm just looking for an opportunity to make you more money, right? Because if I find you good paying freight, if it's what you need, you're going to take it, right? Well, I don't want yeah. And if I don't find you good paying freight, you know, that don't fit your needs. I'm, I'm, and first of all, if it doesn't fit your needs, I'm not even gonna call you on that day. I'm only gonna look for freight that you tell me that you want. That's paying the kind of money that you want. So when I call you up, you see my number on your caller ID. You know I got the kind of freight that's paying the kind of money you want to get paid, going to the places you want to go, pulling the kind of freight that you want to pull. What can I say my dispatch to people to? Now it's hard to get around that. Yeah. Because, you know, and and I'm gonna be honest with you. All the time I've not made that close is when they hung up on me. Yeah, they, they got to. That's the only way they can get out of it. I'm just being honest with you. Because I have been in the phone with people and we have gone round and round and round and round for 20, 40 minutes on the phone. Mm-hmm. Uh, but unless they hang up, we just keep going back to the, I understand, but let me ask you a question. <laughs> and they're trying to keep getting closer and closer and closer. I just keep going for the clothes, keep doing the same transition, and it's just a matter of just repeating that trend. And the way that you get over your anxiety about it, think of it as a game. Yeah, yeah. Think of that because it really is kind of funny when you think about it. <laughs> you know I mean, it really is kind of funny when you yeah. think about it. So if you think of it as a game and you and, you, and, you, and you're thinking of it like this, I'm not really worried about how many people I gotta call. I'm worried about the end results. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the result is, if I get this person signed up to my dispatch agreement, I got a client. If I got a client, I have an opportunity to, you know, do at least, you know, book them at least four loads per week, right? Right. Average right. load runs, what, 750 miles? Yeah. Let me share my screen again. The average load runs 750 miles. You know, if you're sharing our screen, see here. Your average load, let me go to my, my calculator. You got your average load that's running, you know, 750 miles. Okay, on an average, you know, on an average dog on um um um, um drive in load, paying mm-hmm. about 220, 215, 220. Okay. So let's just say times 2.25. That's $1,687, right? Right. That minus 1687 minus 10% gives you 168 bucks. Right? Right. If you're running them four loads per week, just on that right there, that's $672 per week. So, and that's running them what, Monday through Friday or? or? Yeah, 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 Monday through Friday. Uh, but not kind of Saturday because most ship without open on Saturday. Okay? All right. Let's just run them four loads on per week. Because you're, you're not going to, because with 700 some miles, the most of the drivers are going to be to run at 600 miles. Right, most drivers don't run that. Most drivers run about 400 miles a day, 400, 450 miles a day. Right. They ain't gonna drive right. that. So you're gonna have some of those days that's gonna overlap. So you're not gonna be to run them five days a week. You're gonna be running about four, about four loads a week. Okay. Okay. So it's gonna be about four loads a week. So that right there, you got that 672, and you got that 672 
times 52 weeks. And see, this is what I'm, th- and this is what I'm looking at right there. One carry, if I'm dispatching one carry, I should make something close to $35,000 a year. Uh, okay. That, that's how I look at it. If yeah. I'm doing two, I'm doing double that. If I'm doing three or four, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you do that, and you got yourself five carries doing that right there. That's hundred seventy four thousand dollars a year. Mm. It's just that simple, man. Mm. And, and, and that's all I'm really focused on. I'm not really focused on how many people I got to call. I'm not really focused on how many people that say no. I'm not really focused on how many people that hang the phone up on me. I'm just focused on that conversation and getting that one person to sign up. When I get them signed up, then I got a client, then I'm working. I get another one signed up, I got another client, then I'm doing more work. I got another, uh, that's all I'm looking for. I'm just looking, I'm just looking to get to work. Correct. That's all you're doing. Don't worry about, you know, because I got a lot of people calling me, man, uh, I, I be making them up. So 40 calls a day, 50, 60 calls a day, you know, I'm just getting tired of What the fuck? How you doing? I mean, it ain't like you laying no bricks or nothing. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're digging ditches out there and doing construction work. Um, yeah, it's a lot, yeah, it's a lot of hard work out here. Yeah, you're, sitting you're, making phone call, yeah. Yeah, you're sitting on your butt, you're on the computer, you're making phone calls, you're talking to people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, the only thing that you're straining is your voice. That's right. I mean, come on. I mean, seriously, how hard is that? I know a lot of people that work a hell of a lot harder work for a hell of a lot less than $172,000 a year. <laughs> okay? Mm-hmm. I'm serious now. And we're talking about just four or five clients. Yeah. Okay? So the script is basically is designed like a trap. It's, it's, it's designed, y'all think of it I'm like a trap. And you spring the trap by springing the question. How much money do you need to move your truck? Sure. You know, you lure them in with the little small thought. Hey, John, how you doing? I see you got a truck over there at such and such and such. You know, what you call it? I see that you're a drive man carry, and um, you know, you've been in business because you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna have the information. You know, when you look them up. Yeah, yeah. Pull in. You see what he got? This is that. You've been doing this next number of years. A little small talk. Look, John, I don't take a whole lot of time because I know you're very busy. Let me ask you a question. Oh, let me get right to the point. How much money do you need to move your truck? You just don't speak, you don't spawn the trap. Yeah. Now if they answer that question, oh, they in the trap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> everything else, everything else that they're doing is trying to get out of the trap. Yeah. And everything you're doing is making that trap smaller mm-hmm. and smaller and smaller. And the only way to get out is to sign that dispatch review. Yeah. Or hang up. <laughs> or hang up. That's right. That's yeah. the only way to get out. And for some reason, it's hard for people to hang that phone up. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a crazy thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Poop, yeah. All, all they gotta do is just stop talking, click. <laughs> but yep. for some reason, it is like it's almost impossible for people just to do that little simple thing. It's hard for them. So as long as they're talking, guess what? You still got a chance of closing. That's right. As long as they can long for as long as they're standing on the phone giving you objections, you keep mm-hmm. moving. You keep using okay. the same training. And the reason why you want to use the same transition because it makes you sound more confident. Because if you try to think of something new, you're doing the um yeah, okay, uh, 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 now you sound like you know what you're talking about. Not now they for sure gonna hang up on you. Yeah. Talking to me on the way you're doing click, you know. But if you use the same transition, you sound more confident every time you use it. Yeah. Jason, I understand. But let me ask you a question. <laughs> Look, Jason, I totally understand. But let me ask you a question. Yeah. They'll say you sound confident every time you say that. Because you ain't got to think about it. It's just, it's coming. Second nature, yeah. Second nature. Yeah. And that, those are the marks of great script. Those are, like I said, I'm not really that big on a, a word-by-word script, but I'm mm-hmm. big on the characteristics that make up a great script. Okay. Those characteristics never change. A question that forces them to give you an answer that's going to close them. Okay. Because you know in car sales, what they tell you in car sales. If you listen to the client long enough, they'll tell you how tell to you close. How to, yeah, yep, they'll tell you how to close. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, so a lot of times, you ain't even got to talk. See, a lot of car sales make mistakes if they just talk all the time. Talk too much, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, talk too much. I, man, I was in car sales. I would go out and say, hey, how you, how you folks doing today? Great, man. We're doing great. And so y'all just came out just to look. <laughs> right? <laughs> I asked that people question, right? Yeah. They're like, they're either gonna say, "Well, you know, uh, no, we, no, we've been thinking about buying a car here." 
Well, they tell you what they're gonna need to close them. Thanks. And my my motto was I was I was real aggressive on a lot. So when customers would come and say, you know, uh, oh man, we just looking. Okay, well, what are you looking for? A car, truck, SUV? You know, and I just go into it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we just looking. Okay, great. Well, what are you looking at? We got, yeah. we got, we got a lot of stuff to look at. Yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you looking at today? Yeah. Oh well, you know we, you know we've been, you know we've been talking about. Look, they done told you, they, they tell you already. They ain't just like right, yep. yep. talking about it, we've been thinking about it. This is that. So y'all just, to, and then some people just insist, dog man. Look, I told you, we just look at man. We ain't, we ain't buying the other day. We just look at this is okay. So y'all just got up on a Sunday and just got up on a Saturday, you no, know, on a Saturday morning out the blue, y'all both decided that y'all was just gonna come out and look at cars. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. See. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we talked about it. You know, okay, so what? So what type of car y'all been talking about? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, look, it's it, it's those great scripts, those great approaches. They all have the same thing in common, right? You're forcing the person to basically what you're forcing them to talk because when they are talking and you are listening, they are telling you how to close it. You just got to know how to listen. To you just gotta know how to listen for it, right? Right. And you already know what you're listening for, so you just listen for the, for the clues to close them, and then you just if they keep coming up with an objection, you just keep going back to that same thing. I understand, but that's your question. That's right. what, something else that's gonna force them to elaborate on what it's gonna take to close them. So that's your pitch. You know, your you no know, no you know, your pitch allows you to feel more confident by re, by repeating the same transitional phrase. So you don't have to feel nervous about it. Um, and look, ain't nothing wrong with messing up because I like I like messing up because messing up teach me a whole lot. True, true. Right? Because look, when you're talking with somebody and you screw up, you immediately, you immediately know, you immediately know, boy, God, I, if yeah. I just see it, that. If, I, if I had not done that, I'd still, you, you immediately learn something. Yeah. So, that messing up was not all bad. Yeah. <laughs> right? That yeah. messed up is helping you to become more efficient yeah. at your clothes. That's what it's doing. So don't be afraid of messing up. Don't be afraid of none of that. All right. Let's see here. What else we got here? <clears throat> the other thing was you wanted to um question about load management and scaling your business. All right. Load management is basically just knowing how to, you know, search the load boards. Or how to evaluate those on the low board. Uh, like I say, the the main goal is to always looking for those dedicated runs. Okay, uh, and I'm gonna be honest with you, the places I like to look for, the places uh, for me to have the that always have an abundance mm -hmm. of dedicated runs. People ain't gonna believe this. Florida, yeah, Alabama, Georgia, Texas, yeah. and this little trifecta up here: PA, Ohio. Indiana, Illinois. Okay. <laughs> this little stretch right here? Yeah. Woo, long. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. money maker right there. <laughs> that, yeah. Florida, I love Florida. I love Alabama. I'm a dedicated load, and I love Texas. Now, Texas is kind of a uh, double-edged sword because Texas is so big, it's bigger than some three states or four states, five states put together. Yeah, yeah. So and, Texas and, is not and then they, they have them. I, I, I see them, but it, like you say, yeah, it's kind of, yeah. It's, <laughs> they, they go a good long mile. So yeah. Texas is, 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 when you look at it, Texas is bigger than Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, and Florida all put together. Correct. Correct. <laughs> so yeah. you've been a load down here that's going all the way up here. It's going oh. all the way back there. dedicated, but you ain't going to be able to run it every day. Yeah. It's going to take a couple days to run it just within the state of Texas. That's right. Okay. So, but here's why I like Florida. Florida is a peninsula. Okay. Yeah. There's only one way out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you got a lot of Florida to Florida loads. Because you ain't got nowhere to go, but there, there, there. And this is the only way out. <laughs> that's the only way out. The only way out. That's why, that's why people really don't like Florida coming in because they want to come in and get right back out. But you're not going to get right back out because there's only one way. Yeah. So the majority of your freight is going to be Florida to Florida. Okay? But 
since Florida is dependent on its provided itself on low, those lows usually run what? Daily. Daily, yeah. And that's why I like Florida. Though Florida has lows that continuously seem to run daily, you know, most of the time. And a lot of them are going to be short run lows. Like, if you look on here, look at all these hots for the old town. Look at that. Bunch of hot for the old town, 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 hot for the old town. Now, you don't know what they're paying. Well, yeah, you do. I mean, all paying about 500 bucks. Same thing, three three dollars and seventy six cents uh, per mile. They go one hundred thirty three miles. You can run them every day. Yeah, yeah. One hundred thirty three miles. You can run them every day, right? Oh yeah. You got oh, another yeah. load there, and then and then run it back. So if you can find a load going back, you spend about the same. That's a thousand dollars a day. Yep. <laughs> right, and you can run it every day. Yep. That was you know, what I'm saying? Yep. you know the six, the seven, the eight. <laughs> right? Yeah. Dedicated run. That's why I love Florida. Florida is a hotbed for dedicated freight. Hotbed. Jacksonville to Orlando. Same thing. Mm. Dedicated. Hotbed for dedicated freight. You can find, but I can just come to a low board and just about just point and I just toss them on the dog on screen and hit dedicated low, you know, in Florida. Yeah. So when I'm doing low management and all load management is is having conversations with your carriers and convincing your carriers to go to the places you already know that are hot beds for dedicated freight, that are hot beds to find a consistent good paying freight. All right. Okay. What's the difference in taking someone? Let me go back here. What's the difference in in running guys from here all the way over here, or running guys all over the country? And taking what's the difference in somebody who is in Nebraska, South mm -hmm. Dakota, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, North Dakota, all these low paying, you no, know, all these not very many low, big states, but you ain't got yeah. very many low. So for them to make money, they gotta move, right? Yeah. So they're running all over the place looking for freight. And they only get home what? Once every two to maybe three weeks. They are running yeah. two weeks at a time or three weeks at a time. So you want to so, bring them down down south. Yeah. So what's so what's the difference in them running all over the country just to make about four or five grand per week when they can yeah. come down here, right? Just drive on down here, stay down here for a week at a time and make a thousand dollars a day. Yep. Right? Right. A thousand, you went from a thousand to two grand a day. And then you just run a short run in the same place. And then every weekend you just take your behind back home. Yep. Because up here, if you because you run all over the country, you ain't get home every weekend. Or oh, they can stay in Florida and then fly back home. Exactly. But see, that's my point. Relocate your truck to an area where you're making money and you don't gotta put a whole lot of stress on your truck. Because up here, you run all over the country, you put stress on your truck, you pay it more and fuel, you run it down your tires, you got high maintenance, and you don't know where you're gonna be from night to night, yep. and you ain't get back home for two or three weeks. Mm. And you gotta spend more money out eating out, eating at this place, eating at that place. You're spending more money. Why not come to an area that's abundant with freight, that's close around you? You can run short runs all day long, be back in the same place every night, then every weekend take it behind home. Yep. And you make more money. That's right. That's the conversation I have with all my carriers in the beginning. I said, look, here's my goal. My goal is to get you on dedicated freight. Man, I've been running, I've been, I've been running, uh, I've been driving trucks for years, and I don't know how you're gonna find me no dedicated freight, man. I'm well paid in North Dakota. I, I I have to run all over the country. Look, I understand it because you because you because you're in North Dakota and you running all over the country. Country, yeah. <laughs> Let me find you some freight, run you down here to Florida. Florida, Florida, I don't want to go to Florida. Well, hold on, man, shut up and listen for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Let me you down here to Florida. Because remember. Because Florida has a lot of dedicated freight. Unlike, un, un, unlike you up here in, and I, and, and, and I show up the difference. I get on Zoom with them. You up here in North Dakota, right? Yeah. Look how you got to run. Right? Here's a load, yeah, 800 bucks, right? But it's taking you from that to that, I'm not Dakota. That's pretty good. 
It's 231 miles. You can run that in one day if you can get that for a dedicated. Yeah. Yeah, but that's not a dedicated car that runs on the same day. Okay. But then you got some stuff like this right here. Pan. Um, that's a that's a heavyweight load. No, it's not. It's paid 3600 bucks, right? Right. It's not where to make it though. Yeah, see that that's two yeah, yeah, yeah. That ain't no money. Yeah, that's a two and a half day run. Yeah, you gonna that's all your money gonna go on gas. Exactly. It's a two and a half day run. Then you got this little right here that's paying six six to one hundred bucks, right? Right. Look at it. That's an all week run. <laughs> yeah, oh uh, yeah. <laughs> you gotta been all week to make that. Yeah. Now it, it, it's good for the dispatcher, but it's but the owner yeah, operator is yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's good for me, but it ain't doing you no good, man. Yeah, so let me yeah. show you how we can both make money. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna rank out here the floor. And then once you run that, you know, you I mean you run that all week. Ain't no guarantee that that load gonna be available next week. True. And True. you're gonna spend you gonna spend half of that six thousand dollars, you're gonna spend at least two grand on fuel. Fuel. That's right. So instead of doing that, why don't I run you move? We we'll find you some freight that, 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 that and we run you, you know, you know some loads and run you, you know, until we get you down here to Florida, right? right. Now, once you're in Florida, once you are in Florida, man, I can bring you in heaven. Yeah, <laughs> Why would you yeah. want to leave? Why would you want to leave heaven? Oh, you got <laughs> the beaches you, down there. Yeah, once you're in Florida, you in heaven because if you come down here, right? I can put you on some dedicated freight, right? Yeah. Uh, first of all, you got some good short run loads that's paying good money. You can run you know, three, four these doggone things a day. 12 miles, Haines City, two and a half. Look at that. Yeah. $225. You only ran 12 miles. And you ain't burnt no fuel. You got enough time to run about four more loads. <laughs> you know, you to make something quick. 225 bucks. Here's the one that's 49 miles. Sweetwater to Deerfield, Florida. You know, you're going what? 49 miles, lightweight. You made 500 bucks. Yep. You got time enough to run what? Two, three more, three more loads. Yeah, yeah three more loads. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let's think, now, that's just running separate loads, but check this out. You come down here, we look at some of this stuff like right here. This this Okella to Vera Beach. Okella on the Vera Beach runs on the 7th. The load of the day is already gone. That's why you don't see the load off the day, but it runs today and tomorrow. Okay. Right? 650 bucks. Hmm. 171 miles. Check this out. 171 miles. Hold up here. What's that date? Where is it? 650 bucks. Here we go. One that runs on the seven. All right. Yeah, it's right there. O'Keller to Vera Beach. Man, come on. You can't get better than O'Keller to Vera Beach. Oh, <laughs> I mean, you in O'Keller. <laughs> you go to Vera Beach. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. You got this load paying 600 bucks, right? It's, it, it's going a short mileage. It's going 171 miles. You can run that. You got time enough to run back. Yeah. Do that reverse search. Let's see what we got. What was that? Oh, was that a drive man? Yeah, I was a baby. Yeah, yeah, it was a driver. Yeah. Let me get rid of that one. That was a drive man. You got that right there. Rear Beach bike to O'Kella. And we're looking for van. Looking for drive man. Let's see what we got. Let's see if we find something that's close by. First of all, 25 miles. All right, got nothing that's that nice close day. by. Let's say 50 miles. Well, good up top. There we go. Yeah, got one right here. That's going from, uh, you got to go 52 miles in here. And you're going 133 miles back towards Orlando, which is right there by Oak County. It's about 184 and all. Yeah, if you do this right here, let's, let's say uh, 25 miles, let's see what's close um, uh, to O'Kellico. What you're trying to do, you're trying to get back to that, that money load. Yeah. Off from O'Kellico. Not showing anything on there right now, but I guarantee you by tomorrow morning, you have quite a few loads that's picking up going back towards O'Kellico. Yeah. Okay, right there. Let's change this right here to. And drive in. All right, so you got to load this going back, right? Right. You got to load this going back. That's going to put you with the striking distance of O'Kellico. That's what you basically try to do. You try to get back 
to grab this next day low. You know, again. Now, okay. if this low is paying 650 bucks going that way, it's, it's pretty much on the same route going back. It's like the same lane. So the money is going to be somewhere in that same price range. I would try to get the same money going back, 650 or better. Okay. Or if I'm negotiating, I try to get 750 going in and 750 going back. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That gives you $1,400, 1500 that day. $1,500 that you run, there, you run back. You run there, you run back. Because you want to go back to catch your what? Your next day dedicated. Yeah. That's Florida, man. And, and look, if it ain't that one, you got... You got options in Florida. Not like you got one dedicated run. You got options in Florida, man. You got options. This is what I like about Florida. You got options. Yeah, I see. Come out here, I can grab that, you know, that Hosford to Old Town. 133 miles. A little mm -hmm. bit shorter difference. A mm -hmm. little bit shorter um, distance. Look at that. It's still paying 370. Man, that's good. Might have four drive in. Yeah. And that runs every single day. Every mm. single day. Those are the sixth, the seventh, the eighth. And they got some of them running. You got several of them running on the hold up here. Now, question. That's on the, again, it's run again on the sixth here. Yeah. Now, 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 this might be the same load because they're by two different, two separate brokers. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I see. Shippers will give brokers, you know, the same loads. <laughs> like, yeah. a lot of people don't, I tell people all the time, shippers don't care who they get the loads to. They, they, they need to move. Yeah, they try to, they, whoever's they, gonna move the load. Yeah, they're trying to get a move. But, now, qu qu question, when you, um, let, let's just say you, let's just say if, if I get five carriers, right, and I put them all on dedicate. Now, would, would I need to hire a, a dispatch agent yeah, because if you want, because that goes to what you call scaling your business. All right. Okay. okay. Here, here, here is what I do. My goal is to pick up, you know, try to get five carries. I'm calling, get five carries. Okay. I'll give you a time frame. If I'm making 50 calls per day, I should be closing at least one out of that 50 with that script. Minimum one out of 50. Right. Okay. Right. Right. That means I'm closing at least one carrier per day. Right. Right. So by the end of the week, I got what? Five carriers. Okay. Right. I'm dispatching those five carriers because I'm trying to find them some good paying you know, freight. I'm trying to find them good pay rate and get them on the schedule. I'm yeah. trying to find them good time to put them on some dedicated runs. So let's say I dispatch those carriers for about two, three weeks and I, and I find them some, you no, know, no, three weeks of dispatching myself. I find them some dedicated freight. Mm -hmm. Right. So if I'm running five carriers and I'm making about at least $150, $200 a week per carry, yeah. right? I got them undedicated. You know, I get Even if I don't get them undedicated, I've been running them you know, on a regular basis for at least three weeks. After yeah. three weeks, yeah. I'm going to put an ad out on Facebook, LinkedIn, on Indeed or something. I'm looking for me a dispatcher, a dispatch agent. Okay. Um, I'm paying you 40% or 70% of the low fee. Yeah. I'm going to give you Five carriers that I'm already dispatching for, so you ain't got to find yourself no carriers. Right? What determines what you pay them? Yeah, so, yeah. like like yeah. what determines like 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 if if, right. if there's a reason why I I encourage you all to charge ten percent. Yeah, on, yeah. On. The reason why you want to charge ten percent because when you get your five carriers and you hire yourself a dispatch agent, you got to pay them six percent of that low fee or seven percent. Which means you got to keep four percent or three percent. Okay. And here's how here's how how it works out. Okay. The first three weeks you got no, you got five carriers, right? Right. And let's say you're doing two hundred bucks a week on each carrier. Okay. So you're doing a thousand dollars a week, right? right. I mean, a thousand dollars per day on each carrier, right? Right. So I'm sorry. Let's say you're doing two hundred bucks uh, uh, per load, not per week. 200 bucks per load on each carry. So that's a thousand dollars, right? And let's say if you're running them at least, you got them on dedicated. Let's say, let's say they're running, you know, not you know, let's just say they're running 
dedicated to four, six. Let's say they're writing um, two hundred bucks a day. Let's say they're writing five, six loads per week. Okay. Okay. That times six, so that means you're making about six thousand dollars a week. Okay. Okay. Now you're gonna go out. And you're gonna hire yourself five dispatch. I mean, one dispatch agent. And you're gonna give them those five carries, right? Right. You're already right. making six thousand dollars a week, right? Right. You're gonna give right. them, let's say, sixty percent, six to forty, seventy thirty. Either way, you're gonna give them sixty percent of that six thousand dollars. So they're making thirty six hundred dollars a week. Mm. Not bad money for when you have a dispatch, right? That's right. And that means, that means you're making twenty four hundred dollars a week. Yeah. Now you got to go back out because remember, for three weeks you made that whole six thousand dollars a week. Yeah. Right? So you not like you made no money. So yeah. now you're gonna get those five. Then now, now when you get them those five, you're gonna go back out and get yourself five more carries. So you're still making your calls. Right. Get some more carries, right? Right. Right? So another three weeks um go by, you got your carries again, you made six thousand dollars a week for three weeks, whatever this is that, and you hire yourself a dispatcher and then you give them those the same thing. So okay. every so every fourth or fifth week, or at least once a month. You're hiring a new dispatch agent because you're getting five more carries. Okay. And you're gotcha. and you're building up the income. So you're looking at six thousand for three weeks, but you're probably making six thousand for three weeks times three weeks equals that right eighteen thousand dollars for three weeks. So you so you break that down eighteen thousand dollars for three weeks and then when you get yourself another, what you call it, you're doing twenty four hundred dollars um, per week, per week. Right? Okay. right? So you're doing twenty four hundred a week. Twenty four hundred a week. When you break it down and you give that care, and you go out and get your five more carries. So every, you know, about three times a week, about three to four times a year, you're making eighteen thousand okay. dollars. But the rest of the time, you're making twenty four hundred bucks. Okay. Per Per week. Yeah, per week. Uh, per week. So let's just say you got built up at the end of the year, you're laying about five carriers every, you should be making about five carriers every three weeks. There's 52 weeks of the year. So it's 52 divided by five. So you got 10.4 weeks, right? 52 weeks yeah. divided by five. Uh, so you got 10.4 weeks uh, that you're making that kind of money. And I'm mean, sorry. Basically, ten point four weeks is is the weeks you're adding on your you know your carers, right? Okay. Every 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 you know three weeks, every three to four weeks, you're hiring a dispatch, and you build and you're growing your firm. So you're growing your firm by one dispatcher every you know um, at least you add a dispatcher every month. Doing those so by the end of the year, you got yourself about 10 dispatchers. Okay. And they each are making you about $2,400 per week. $2,400 uh, per week, right? So That's you got $24,000 a week times mm -hmm. 52 weeks. Wow. And that's about, that's about what, what 50, 50 trucks? 50, 60 yeah, trucks? Yeah, because each because each one of them has about five has, has about five carriers. That's right. Okay. Yeah. You see, yeah. you see how that works out? Yeah, I see. It's, yeah. it's, it's not that hard when you when you think about it in the terms of, of man. I go out and get myself five carriers. I dispatch them for about three weeks. And I turn them over to another. I, I find me a dispatch agent. I pay my dispatch agent because your dispatch agent, they're making 3600 bucks a week, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, coming on making thirty six hundred. Yeah, they coming on making thirty six hundred bucks a week. Yeah, you are making coming on making six figures. Yeah, that time fifty two weeks. <laughs> they ain't bad money for this much coming on. Man, you already know they the groundwork for. Them. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully you got them on on dedicated. Now, now another question. And if and if and if 
By the time you reach that point, you should be ready to upgrade you know, on our training platform to the corporate enrollment. So you let us train them. They get trained on how to locate, dedicate, just like you got trained on. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. That's what, that's exactly what I was going to ask. Uh, so okay, what if uh, what if they they lose a the driver? It, be, it, they're going to, look. If they lose a the driver, who are they being trained by? What do we train you all? They got the same tools and resources that you got. Nah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They're being trained just like you being trained. Yeah. So they know how to go in there and look for carriers, pitch them, get a carrier by signed up. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Cool. Cool. See how that works? No, cool. they can't come to, they can't come to us and say, well, I want to start my own dispatch firm, you know, and still be on your program. Well, we can't do that until you issue a letter of release because you're the one who's paying for the training. That's right. See you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you release them, they can't come to us and say, Well, I want to pay for my own training. Well, I, I gotta get a letter. A statement of release from you before I allow them to do that. Yeah. You know, not that you can hold them to it, but you they give you time enough to, to find you enough dispatcher to yeah. so Okay. Man. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Now nah, okay. That, that make a whole lot of sense right there. So I mean this business is not that it's not that hard of a business. And the way we have it set up, you know, <laughs> you know, we yeah. try to simplify it for you. And that's the great thing about being part of it of a network that we have instead of just taking a class or a course. Because when you yeah. take a class and just a course, after you're done with the class of course, you're on your own. Yeah. You know, yeah. They don't, they're not, and they're not showing you and helping you to scale your business. They're not training you and your people. They're not providing you access to a network where you can get help from other people just like yourself. Right. That's right. And and and, and the biggest part is they don't provide you with the tools and resources like we do to help you save money. Yep. Because you because you because you definitely gonna need these low boards. Oh yeah. The yeah, bad boards cost money. You need at least yeah. four or five of them. You know, I mean, I mean, I mean, this is a great low board, but you ain't gonna be able to find all your freight on here. Yeah. That's yeah. why we give you the other low boards too. Okay. So we give you a lot of different resources and tools and things of that nature. All right. All right. All right, man. So uh that's about the time, our time for the Oh, yeah. Time is 3 40, 3 So, yeah, we, we didn't get started until about 2 30. All right. Um, uh, uh, 2 30, 2 35. So, so, yeah, I mean, look, man, this this business is not hard. You off to a, you off to a good start. You know, you're in the right place. If you have questions about that thing, if you got a quick question or something, just give me a call. If it don't take more than 10, 15 minutes, you know me, I'm happy to answer the question. Okay. Okay. Oh. Private consultation. You always have access to go and book a private, you know, consultation. But remember, we have training every Thursday night, seven p.m. each time. Time the same link, seven okay. p.m. Eastern time every Thursday night from seven till about nine, and you can ask all the questions you want during training. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right, man. Appreciate it, Calvin. Man, appreciate it. No problem, man. Anytime, man. Anytime. Help me out a lot, man. Yeah, man, because you know we just started our, our consulting firm too, where we represent freight brokers firms. Um, so we've got a lot of positions you know, available within the freight brokers firm that we are managed. So we do freight broker management now. Okay. So, so you want to get that type of you know get on that side of it and go to work for you know one of these brokers firms that we are managing, man, we got a kick ass pay plan. Pay plan. Right. I mean, better than anything out there. All right. I'll keep All right, man. All right. All right, man. Appreciate it. You too. You have a good one. All right, you too.